Well, thank you. I, um, we, you know, we get our inspiration from many places, and one of mine is uh, the I Have a Dream speech from Martin Luther King. Um, I, I see that in many ways as a precursor to TED or TEDx because uh, it was very forward thinking, the idea that all men really are created equal. So I turned to the speech thinking that it would be a great inspiration to maybe give me some material. And yet what I found was Martin Luther King uh, talking about equal rights for white men and black men. He talked about brotherhood, not sisterhood. He talked about a lot of things about being equal. But I couldn't find any reference to women throughout the whole spe speech. So I thought, I'm really in trouble. I better not use this. <laughs> but there was hope, because uh, what I also found is that Martin Luther King had four children. Two boys, two girls. And my favorite quote from the speech, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And this, I believe, is evidence that Martin Luther King was looking forward to both men and women having equal rights. Now, interestingly, I found Martin Luther King III, 40 years later, was talking about his dad. Throughout his speech, men and women were peppered through the speech. So uh, I, I felt a little bit better because now I can still use I Have a Dream because I do have a dream that the American dream will prevail and that we will be able to enjoy um, these kinds of freedoms, all of us. Uh, and yet we've got a long way to go. Today, in the Fortune 500 ranks of corporate CEOs, there are only 3% of, of the Fortune 500 CEOs uh, that are female. There are only 15% of board seats among those same 500 companies held by females. So we have a long way to go, and racial minorities even are worse numbers, the statistics are worse. So in spite of all of these efforts, we still have a long way to go, but what do I have to say about this? I'm your classic you know, middle-aged white male, right, up here talking with a group of females. Well, I, I am not what I appear. Don't judge me by the package, <laughs> if you will. Uh, I am every man and every woman in many ways. You see, I was born um, a multi-ethnic uh, case, uh, Irish, English, Swedish, the classic, a little Spanish in, but my grandmother was very proud to be part Blackfoot Indian. So I am the classic a melting pot that is America. Uh, I am, well, otherwise perhaps called the American muck, uh, but that is me. Now, I was born, as too many families in America, into a family with too little money and too many kids and not enough to go around. We literally grew up, it's hard to imagine today, in a three room, not three bedroom, three room home more politely called a shack, I would guess, but it was a three-room place that we all tried to, to live and make the best of, with a, with a mother and father both working in factories trying to make ends meet. Um, so I am here today not in the package you would, you would think. I did beat the odds to have the freedom to dream and to be able to do what my brothers and sisters couldn't do, to actually be able to graduate from high school Instead of going out and getting married as my sisters did at a very young age or my brothers got a job, I was able to go to college to work hard to get an education. So what made me different? Well, I, I love to tell the story of my Uncle Lenny. Um, he, was, he was the only one in the family who had an education, but he was a school teacher. I thought he was a rich guy. He had running water in his house. Um, wasn't a very big house. It turns out 40 years later I went back and I said, Uncle Lenny, show me your library. He said, Jim, I don't have a library. Look, I mean, this is a, I'm a school teacher. This is a relatively small house. We have a couple of bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, that's it. I said, no, I remember as a kid, I was so inspired by the books in your library. It was huge. And he took me to the washroom and he showed me a shelf. And there were some books on the shelf. That was a library. But as a child, that was an inspiration. I equated knowledge from books and books being education and education being success. And he had running water and we didn't. I wanted that. And so I studied and I studied and I studied and it worked. I was able to get a degree. I was able to go into graduate school. I was able to um, get a job. I, I ended up having the privilege of running now two major US co global corporations. I, I spent 20 years of my career with 7-Eleven, had the privilege of running that organization for many years, retired, and then took on the incredible challenge of Blockbuster and trying to transform the brand. I can tell you it is a challenge. 
<laughs> we need your business, by the way. <laughs> but the greatest, most rewarding fulfillment that I've had in my career is not in either of those corporate roles. It was the creation of a foundation, actually called the Education is Freedom Foundation. And the, the purpose of this foundation, I, I'd love to say it was completely altruistic, but while I was leading a major corporation, I realized the, the single biggest problem we had was a workforce of some 50,000 domestic employees. And they turned over all the time, and we couldn't have a full pipeline of qualified, educated employees. And we wanted diversity, we wanted more females in the workforce, and yet we couldn't find them. Um, and so we literally took all of our, uh, of our contr charitable contributions and said, let's put them to work, let's grow our own, let's create an organization that will help students by literally uh, taking them end to end from middle school, encouraging them that they can have an opportunity to go to college in spite of their economic background, in spite of their ability to pay for school, and then mentoring them and counseling them, giving them academic standards, helping them when they get to, to, to high school with their SATs, helping them with their coursework, ultimately even providing scholarship money. So literally, we go end to end. Well, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of the success already of some of these programs. Went to the, uh, living in Dallas, Texas, I went to the superintendent of schools and said, give me your toughest school. Give me the place that has the late, greatest dropout rate and you've just given up on. And they, they gave us a school called Adamson to try. This is almost 10 years ago. And Adamson had over 50% dropout rate. Well, we turned that school around. Ended up with this program going from less than 10 graduates of the, of the school going on to college to last year over 100 students went to college in their graduating class and 61% of them are female. It works, the programs work, education works. Um, it is just the beginning though. It's just the beginning of these students' education as they go on because what I found is that education can't stop. The eye opener for me as part of education is freedom is that it doesn't just end when you get out of school. That learning is a lifelong opportunity. So whether it was my admiration for art that caused me to study art and want to be an artist and I can do that today, or music, so I studied music, or I was working with, Jap with uh, many Japanese uh, in one of my opportunities and traveling to Japan, so I learned a language and it helped so much more in being able to deal with that culture. And I discovered that learning really is a lifelong uh, opportunity. But then I made this funny transition along the way from student to teacher. And I realized that as a, as a leader, I couldn't do everything anymore. I had to rely on others. And then I encountered all of these obstacles that others had in their own success. I encountered ceilings. I encountered walls. I encountered adversity. Not for me, because I was able to blow through those things through persistence and education and whatever, I was able to blow through those obstacles, but I discovered ceilings do exist. In some cases, they're concrete. If it's concrete, you better find the stairs. Or if the stairwell's locked, you better get out of there because you're not gonna break through the concrete. Or maybe it's glass and you have to bust through the glass ceiling, but you may get cut by the shards. And if you use technology, if you use data, if you use information, and you diagnose that glass, you might find it's ice, and if you're better prepared, perhaps you can melt the ice and still get through the ceiling. The challenge is to be able to not let obstacles stand in your way, to grab control. Um, Oprah Winfrey, uh, yes, I do once in a while pick up Old Magazine, and she has some great quotes in there. Um, she uh, said, don't impose the ceiling on yourself. Don't let yourself create a ceiling. Um, nothing. There's nothing that can't be overcome with hard work. And I admire that. And in fact, one of the privileges of being a CEO, every once in a while you have a chance to meet someone like Oprah. I did, I had a chance to sit down with her in her office. She uh, kicked off her shoes after filming one of her shows, chatted with me about education as freedom, uh, told me I stole her name. I said, use it loud and long. As long as you want to talk about education as freedom, please do. And I, I told her the story about how it was started and how I found the name, and I'll share that with you in closing. I went back to Columbia University in a suit, briefcase in hand, feeling pretty good about myself. I was going back to teach a class. And I ran into a student that stopped me in my tracks. 
Coming toward me was a student with a t-shirt said three simple words, education is freedom. And I, I looked at this kid and I, and I shook their hand and I realized at that moment, it didn't matter who they were, what they were, they, it didn't matter, I didn't even know if they were black or white, male or female, Muslim, Catholic, it didn't matter. We were absolutely peers. We both shared the same experience that education is freedom. And I believed at that point that it was my mission to help spread the word. So I told Oprah, loud and as long as you want to speak about education is freedom, please do. And I'm grateful today to TEDx for being able to help spread the word. Education really is freedom. Thank you very much.